How's it going, gang? Hope you're well, hope you're safe. Hope you've had a great couple of days. Been training. Um, <coughs> still trying to catch my breath back a little bit. But welcome back to The Rules of Thinking with Richard Templar. So, last time we went over rule number 22. Normality isn't normal. And I've got to agree, like, I've never been able to have someone define the word normal to me. Like, there's been so many times in my life where I've been told, you're not normal, yeah? Or some other variation of that. And when I've asked, like, what's normal? No one's been able to actually explain that to me. No one can. Normal's bullshit. It doesn't exist, yeah? Normal is a concept that doesn't exist. It doesn't actually exist. It's an illusion. Because every single person on the face of this earth is different. We're all unique. We're all individuals, yeah? Normality is a load of shit. Fuck normality. Yeah? Be you. Thrive off your differences. Okay? It's your life. Live it on your terms. And think. It's your mind. Make it up yourself. So, rule number 23. Evaluate your emotions. Let's see what you've got to tell us today, Richard. <laughs> One sec. Thoughts and feelings are not the same thing. And you don't have to be rationalise your feelings in order to justify them. It's perfectly fine to feel angry or sad or frustrated or depressed without having to be able to explain why. Feelings are always okay because they just are. What you do with them might not always be acceptable. The fact you feel frustrated doesn't justify rudeness. But the frustration just is what it is. People who say, don't feel like that, it doesn't make sense, are making no sense themselves. I've heard comments like, calm down, there's no need to be angry. But anger isn't driven by logical need. It's a thing that just happens sometimes. Hmm. Let's read on. I'm not... Let's read on. Nevertheless, while no one should expect you to justify your feelings... Actually, it's in your own interests to be able to understand it. It's not compulsory, it's just helpful. If you can think rationally about your feelings while you're feeling them, you're much better placed to find ways to ameliorate the ones you don't enjoy having. I think ameliorate means like just decrease or take power away from, devalue, just reduce. Yeah, I think that's what ameliorate means. I'll need to double check on dictionary.com. <laughs> right, the first step is to work out what you're feeling By which I mean, give it a name No, not Eric or Bubbles <laughs> Think about which word best describes it Try to be as specific as you can Don't just stick with happy or sad Are you frustrated or disappointed? Is it fear or anxiety? Are you grumpy or irritated? This not only identifies the feeling. It also gives you that sense of detachment from your feelings that mindfulness can. That enables you to separate your deeper self from the temporary emotions you're experiencing. Okay, starting to make a lot more sense now, Richard. I've got to agree. I've got to agree. There can be times when even though your emotions are going to be triggered, yeah? Like, for example, whenever I've gone through first aid training, like, I, I try and imagine, like, what if this is happening in real life, you know? And I try to, like, make it as realistic as possible for myself so that if ever I do come across a situation that requires first aid in real life, I'm not going to be just freezing. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I've not, I've not, like, I've, I've come across a few first aid situations, thankfully. And, you know, um, thankfully, like, I've not frozen. That's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Not that I've come across them, but thankfully I've not frozen. I've been able to help and deal with them. But, yeah, you've got to be able to detach from your emotions and not let your, o not let your emotions overwhelm you, yeah? You've got to be in control. And that, that comes from actually being able to understand what you're feeling, yeah? Now, you understand what you're feeling. Can you think through why you're feeling it? I mean the real reason, which isn't necessarily obvious. For example, you might be annoyed with your friend for turning down your suggestion of an evening out, but it could be the sense of rejection that has really upset you. Not simply missing out on a trip to the pub or the movies. Or not. I don't know. 
But you might if you think it through. Making sense of your feelings like this can help to calm them. It's not about having any expectation of them. Their feelings and they'll do what they like. But thinking them through at least distracts you and tends to give them some perspective. You're also likely to notice if you're particularly prone to certain emotions. Do you often notice that you're feeling disappointed, for example, or pessimistic or regretful? Now that's useful information. If you have a tendency to feel disappointed, that suggests to your rational thinking mind that your expectations tend to be too high. After all, disappointment is about failing to meet your expectations. So now you can actually work on being more realistic in what you expect from people or from situations, or from whatever it is you've noticed tends to disappoint. Another benefit of separating your thoughts from your feelings is that you're more likely to wait until the worst of the feeling is over before you do anything about it. Feelings may not be rational, but actions can be thought through. And your thoughts can take control of whether you fire off an angry email, or shout at your mother down the phone, or spend the evening at home sulking when you could go out and have some fun. The moral of the story, it's not compulsory, it's just helpful. What's helpful? To evaluate evaluate your emotions, okay? Definitely increase emotional intelligence. It helps you so much in life. I'll always recommend that. All right, thank you so much. I'm going to record the next rule now and I'm going to post it later, okay? Cheers.